flights by trans love. This is probably the beginning of when uh, we decided that we didn't like the light shows that were being there. I don't believe, I think, believe Magic Veil, vale, Jerry had either uh, sold his share of the light show or uh, Trans Love Energies, which was John Sinclair and the MC5 and all the people involved. We were getting more and more involved uh, because the MC5 were playing almost every weekend at the Grandy. Um, we decided to do our own light show. There was some equipment there, and we went out and bought some equipment. And uh, Gary Grimshaw had worked with uh, Jerry Yunkin, so he instructed me on how to handle uh, oils and, uh, to use on the overheads and we did, like I said, eventually I did a, a whole slew of uh, hand slides and uh, we made $25 a week or $25 a night, one or the other. I know we didn't make anything, none of us got any money. The money all went to uh, Trans Love Energies. And at the time I wasn't living with them, so I was more or less working for free. But then I never had to pay to get into the Grandy. And I got to be up on the light stand and see all of the, the band from, you know, and, and actually uh, make a difference as to what the kids saw up on the walls. And it was a lot of fun and very exciting. And boy, some nights you had it and sometimes you didn't, but I remember one night, I forget the band that was playing, but I had a plate of uh, uh, colored water and oil in it and was pouring um, alcohol into it and mixing little things that help keep the water from uh, uh, breaking down and the oil from breaking down. and. Uh, just the right combination of chemicals hit, and um, it looked like I had the wall on fire. And Gary actually got down off the light stand and walked around up front and said, just go ahead and do what you're doing. I want to go watch this, you know. And uh, that happened quite often because sometimes one or the other of us would take some acid and You'd be okay for a little while, but if you took acid and tried to do a light show, you'd either end up staring into a thousand watt bulb, which would drive you blind real fast. You just couldn't handle it. It was too, too exciting just to look at it. So you, you either kept your eyes fixed on the wall and tried to do everything with your hands and not look down, or just gave up and went down on the dance floor watched it and said, I can't do any more tonight. Somebody else take over. But all of them had a good time. Clear Light, they were a San Francisco band. Gypsy Blue, I believe they were from Ohio. I always remember because there were some topless dancers that used to come up with Gypsy Blue. They liked the band or the band played in their club or something. And, uh, I don't know. Quite an unusual sexual experience with one of those topless dancers that we won't go into now. <laughs> John Mayall and the Blues Breakers. This was a one of those shows that everybody was looking forward to. Scott Richard Case, the Amboy Dukes. It's amazing to see Ted Nugent's band in such small letters here, but. People were uh, people got popular real fast back then. So probably a couple of weeks later, you know, and they were uh, they were getting top billing. But the Rationals were playing all the time there, and I always loved the Rationals. Beacon Street Union. There's one of the. They, the the MC5 were not very popular in Boston. This is an unusual card here. I, I do believe I remember being there that night. Another one of those, the Frost, the Children, the Jagged Edge. That was a speed band. Those guys were into methadrine a whole lot. The Ashmolean Quintet, I believe that was some 
guys from Ann Arbor who were friends with uh, some of the Stooges before they had actually started a band. Boy, it's going to take me a minute to remember who this is. Oh, the birds. That was the birds, yeah. For some reason, I wasn't at that show. I think Gary was really starting to experiment with, with color printing in here, and, and uh, they, they were giving him a little, the printer was giving him a little more leeway as far as letting him, you know, well, letting him do what he wanted with color. And, uh, he did, the, the printer knew that there was going to be some unusual requests, but he didn't, he didn't try and be a smart ass or say, listen, kid, you don't know what you're doing here. And he, he let Gary do a, a lot of things that uh, eventually turned out to be standard things for the, the poster art that was coming out. Now that's a picture of Gary. Yeah, show. doing the light show off, the, taken from the, from the floor of the Grandy. The light stand was up about, oh, 15 feet. Maybe it, maybe it wasn't even that. Maybe it was 10 feet, but this would have been up about 15 feet yeah. over the edge. And uh, this was all local bands again. When, when Scott Richard, who, who uh, later called himself Scott Richardson, back to Scott Richard. Right. And then you can see down here they've got SRC in parentheses, so that was uh, when they were just changing over. Fruit of the Loom, I always liked them. I thought that was a great name. Any, anybody that named their band after underwear had to, had to be cool. Their big hit, Take Your Clothes Off and I'll Love You. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's an interesting little thing on the bottom. Also, Carousel and the Psychedelic Stooges. That was um, when the Stooges first started playing at the Grandy. There was some pretty amazing stuff. The drummer, Scott Ashton, he, he didn't have bass drums, so they cut the bottoms out of uh, two 80 gallon uh, oil drums, painted them white, and, and he would put Speed King pedals on, on those things and make this incredible amount of noise on his drum kit. And I remember uh, their roadie, at one point, he brought a septic tank in with him and dropped a microphone down through the hole and uh, come near the end of the set, he had some big, uh, those mallets and was beating on this septic tank with this microphone in it, and it was just echoing through the brandy like nothing you've ever heard before. 